So let's do this example problem in the book. And I'll read you the problem. It says, the, the ball in the strobe photo, which is in the book on page 159, uh, was launched with an initial velocity of 4.47 meters per second. It's not very fast. At an angle of 66 degrees above the horizontal. A, what was the maximum height the ball attained? B, how long did it take the ball to return to the launching height? And C, what was the range? Now, I'll be honest, I don't really like the way the book solved this problem. You can read it and make sense out of it. That's fine. But I'm going to show you the way I would do it. So first, let's, let's do given. So let's, let's draw the flight of the ball. Here's the horizontal, some, some plane or whatever. <clears throat> and the ball was launched from this height. And the initial velocity is 4.47 meters per second, right? Now think about this. The ball was launched at an angle. That means its initial velocity has components to it. it. Has an x component and a y component. And I always show those components in what's given. Just to remind myself, hey, this object has velocity in both the horizontal and the vertical direction at the beginning of the problem. Now this ball is going to go on, on a flight, on a trajectory. We call it the path that it takes. It's going to go up and down. But all the while, <coughs> it's going up and down. It's still moving to the right at constant velocity. And this angle here is 66 degrees. So what are we trying to find? A, we want the maximum height. Now I call that delta y max. You can call it h if you want for the height, but you know, delta y is your height. It's and and we want the maximum. And where does that happen, of course? Where does delta y max happen? Where is it at the highest level? Right here in the middle. So I think you can see that right here it's at its maximum height. And then B, we want the, uh, how long did it take the ball to return to the launching height? Well, this is the launching height right here. And it's going to go up and back and down. So we want to know how much time it took to go from here over to here. So I'm just going to call that T, the total time that we're in flight. And then C, uh, it says, what is its range? Now you have to read in the book what range was. I'm not sure if I used that in the video in terms of the vocabulary. But it says, um, uh, on page 158, it says the other quantity depicted is the range, R, which is the horizontal distance the projectile travels. So but what horizontal distance did it travel? It went from here over to here. Now I'm going to call that delta x. That's what I call the range. It starts here and it goes out here. It's really the horizontal displacement. Delta x. Okay, now let's solve it. There are multiple ways to solve these problems because there's a lot given here. Uh, first of all, what is the acceleration of the, uh, of the ball? Let's take a look at the ball in mid-flight here. The only acceleration, if I draw a free body diagram of the ball, is the force of gravity. If the force of gravity is the net force on the ball, we know what the acceleration on the ball is. The acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and this is in the y direction, so I'll call it a sub y. The book calls it g, which is fine. You could call it g if you want to. 
and it's negative because it's down. Now, here's one thing to notice. These projectile motion problems do not involve a lot of free body diagrams and summing the forces in the x and summing the forces in the y. These problems in this assignment are like, project, or are like the uh, kinematic equation problems that we worked a couple of units ago, like in unit two. This is kind of like unit two and unit one combined, but now in the x direction and the y direction. So have your kinematic equations handy. And I'll just rewrite them here. So this should be on like an equation list that you're using while, while working these problems. You know, like in the, in the y direction, uh, since we know what the acceleration is, we can say, hey, this is v equals v naught plus a t. But these are all in the y direction, y direction, y direction. I know I'm writing really small, but sorry, i got to fit a lot on here. And then, you know, delta y equals v naught y plus v y over 2 times time. Delta y equals v naught y t plus one half a in the y times t squared, and then v y squared equals v naught y squared plus two a in the y times delta y. These are the kinematic equations in the y direction that I talked about in the in the lecture, and then. In the x direction, there's really only one kinematic equation. Because in the x direction, there is no acceleration. So wherever you have acceleration, it, that term is 0. And the only thing you really have is delta x is equal to v naught x times t times time. That's it. That's your only kinematic equation. All right. So, and it's time. Look, we have time here, and then we have time in these uh, three first three equations and so that's what we that's the link between the x and y direction there's another one too look at this look at the velocity here its x component is v naught cosine theta where theta is the launch angle and this is v naught sine theta is its initial velocity in the y now let's actually do the problem and you have to figure out what what do I know and what am I trying to find and how what equation am I going to use to solve it here's delta y now look at the very very top when you're at the top the velocity in the x direction is just equal to the initial velocity times the cosine of the launching angle the velocity in the x direction doesn't change with in projectile motion but what's the velocity in the y direction here? Well, it was going up. It's about to go down. So what does it have to do? It has to stop in the y direction just for an instant in time. Its velocity is 0 at the very top. That's a really handy thing to know. So what do I want? I want delta y. So I want to use one of these three equations. I know what the initial velocity in the y direction is. I know what the final velocity is. I know what the acceleration is. What's the only thing I don't know and I don't need? Is time. I don't need time to find delta y. I can use this one. Now the book does it a little differently. The book solves for time and then plugs into one of the others. It's just fine. You can do that. You can do it the way the book does it. But I'm going to do it this way for part A. I'm going to say vy squared equals v naught y squared plus 2a delta y. Now, what is the final velocity in the y, in the y direction? Zero. I know what this is. So now I can solve for delta y. Delta y equals We'll bring this to the other side and then divide by 2a. Now I can plug in my numbers. Well, what is v naught y? So negative, and then v naught y is v naught, which is 4.47 times 
times the sine of 66 degrees. And then I have to square that. And then I have to divide by twice the acceleration, which is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So I'm just using those kinematic equations again. And look what cancels out. The negative does. You plug all that in your calculator and you will get a delta y that is uh, 0 0.85 meters. Any questions on that? And then for part B, we want to know time that it takes to go from here to here. Now you know something that it's kind of hidden in the picture, but you know it and it's really obvious. Because remember, I, I have to use one of these equations to solve for time. I don't know what delta x is, so I can't solve for time using this equation because there's too many unknowns. So I have to use one of these equations. It has to have time in it, so it's got to be one of these three. Um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use this equation right here, the third one. Part of this is just experience, you know, and you have to work a lot of problems to gain experience. Because I do know, even though it's not given, I know what delta y is. What is delta y when you go from here to here? What was my change in height if I started here and I ended here? It's zero. This is one of those problems where the ball uh, starts at the same height that it ends. It's like a, a football that you, we, we have a kickoff and you kick the ball off and then it hits the ground. It's at the same height as it was when it started. So this is zero. And I know what this is, V0y, it's just V0 sine theta, and I know those things. And I know what the acceleration is. The only unknown is time. So let's solve for it. So this is zero equals V0y times t plus one half a t squared. Now you might think, oh wait, I got a t and a t squared. I, I need to use the quadratic formula. Uh, there are times where you have to use a quadratic formula, but this isn't one of them because one of the answers is t equals zero. So I divide both sides by t. Zero divided by t is zero. And uh, this t cancels with, with that. So I get v naught y plus one half a times t. <clears throat> now I can solve for this, this time t. Well, I have to subtract the v naught to the other side, so it's going to be minus v naught y. I have to multiply both sides by 2, and then I have to divide by the acceleration. So let's plug in our numbers now. Negative, what is v naught? Uh, well, I'll put the 2 before the 2 times v naught y. What is v naught y? Well, it's 4.47 meters per second times the sine of 66 degrees divided by negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And the negative cancels the negative. And I plug those into a calculator. And I will get, you will see, 0 0.83 seconds. So that's equal to my time. And now that I have time, the next part is pretty easy. I want to figure out for part C what delta x is. So I'll start part C right here. There's only one equation for delta x, and that is? 
naught x times t. That's it. So this is equal to 4.47 meters per second. But I want in the x direction, so what do I multiply to get the x component of the initial velocity? The cosine of 66 degrees times the time. Well, I know what the time is now. How much time was this ball in flight? 0.83 seconds. Okay, so I'm at the edge of the paper there. Plug all that into your calculator and you get your answer. 1.5 meters. Okay, so let me center this. Just a little bit. And so here's our whole problem. And it is getting complicated. Uh, look at all the stuff that we have to, to know. We have to know uh, projectile motion. We have to be able to take our launch angle and our initial velocity and break it up into components. I have to know that the acceleration is only in the y direction at 9.8 meters per second squared down. Um, and then I have to know, you know, how to calculate delta x. I have to know the kinematic equations in the y direction and x direction and how to use them to solve a problem. So this is, this is not, um, this is not easy. I, 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 I will fully admit this is not easy, but it's doable. People have been getting through these for 20 years. You can do it too. You just have to keep plugging away, don't give up, keep trying, keep working on it, and you and you will get it. You will get it. And work work lots of problems. And that's what we're gonna do. That is all.